Let's talk about your, your track record, Mark. So um, I, I see that you led two successful efforts to raise the minimum wage. Talk to us about that. How did you do that and, and, and what was that process like? I started four years ago to bring the wage up to 1150 and uh, it was arduous. I, I worked with the District of Columbia and Prince George's County so that we all introduced legislation at the same time. It was an idea I got from the chamber that was upset with me for doing minimum wage without, you know, we were isolating Montgomery County from everybody else. And I thought to myself, well, I can fix that problem. So I went to political leaders in the district in Prince George's County and said, let's do it together. And so we did it together. We got up to 1150. My council was probably the hardest fight. There was an effort to stall it at 1050. There are people who weren't really happy with it. And the Washington Post, of course, was against it. Uh, but I succeeded, and this July it goes to 11.50. And about a little over a year ago, I introduced a bill to raise it to $15 by 20. I, my proposal was 2020, and we had passed the bill 5.4. The executive vetoed it. Um, they did a study trying to prove that the uh, minimum wage would destroy the universe. And their study was so bad that they not only didn't pay the consultant, they didn't even use the arguments that were made in the study. I picked up a sixth vote. We compromised on 2021 and smaller businesses in 23 and 24, but we're going to get to $15 for most people in 2021. Uh, in the end of the day, it was a 9-0 vote, but it should have come sooner and we shouldn't have had some of the delays. So they say progressives can't be pragmatic. Uh, well, that sounds like that was pretty pragmatic and uh, a lot of uh, good uh, Good politics as opposed to bad politics to get to the results that actually serves your community. I can see why you're a danger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's part of the problem, I think. Actually, what's that? I think I think I think people worry that I'll compromise and I'll work things out. I mean, I at one point the post you know criticized me saying I wouldn't compromise on the minimum wage, and I said yes, I will, and then I did, and then they're still not happy with me. Um, sort of like nothing I do, they'd prefer that I be a caricature rather than be a person who has to operate in the real world. I won't give them that. Yeah, no, it, it is disheartening how much the established media has disdain for progressives. It uh, is. Yeah, and uh, it's it's deeply, deeply troubling. Okay, you, you are, uh, we're also in favor of banning the box. For people unfamiliar yeah. with that, uh, can you tell them what that means? So if if you were applying for a job and had a criminal record, uh, oftentimes you'd be confronted by a job application that would just have a box on it that says, have you ever been convicted of a crime? And oftentimes that's the last time you would hear from the company employing you. So we passed legislation in the county that said you can't have that on your application. And you can't ask the question, in an interview until you've gone through the bulk of the interview. Because we wanted to be sure the people who had spent their time and paid their debt to society, that when they got out, they had a chance of getting jobs rather than somebody just saying, oh, you're a criminal, I'm not gonna hire you. And we actually had employers say that they had found that when they interviewed people who had a background, um, oftentimes the people turned out to be really good employees. That you know, having done time and having to want to re-enter society and not go back to that again, you know, people change their perspective and they change their behaviors. And if you never get a chance to do that, then I'm just essentially just saying go back out in the street and support yourself the way you've been used to supporting yourself. And that's bad for them and it's bad for society. So we wanted to open up possibilities for people. Um. Dangerous indeed. Okay, <laughs> so a clear threat to society. <laughs> Helping people. I don't know what you were thinking. Uh, I no wonder the Washington Post <laughs> is against you. All right. Uh, so I want to talk about your personal life for one quick second because I, I see that you got uh, two biological kids and then you fostered and adopted two uh, uh, boys with Down syndrome uh, who are now all grown. Uh, but that's amazing and bless your heart. But what I found to be more amazing was that. You built a house for your daughter, son-in-law, and grandchildren around the corner. Did you literally, you didn't build it from the ground up, did you? Um, well, the house my daughter and my son-in-law and my grandchildren live in, I actually uh, had my uh, son-in-law as a builder, he framed it. And me and friends did all the drywall, insulation, duct work, everything you could possibly imagine. 
And uh, and then when my ex moved out into an apartment that a friend of ours lives in, um, my daughter and her children and her husband moved in there. And I'm right around the corner from them in another house I just finished renovating for myself. What hasn't Mark Elrich done? Okay, uh, so, uh, but on the other hand, the other guy has millions of dollars. 